A couple of years after these burst onto the scene, resin river tables are still one of the most desirable projects that you can undertake. But typically, to make a table this size, you would use a lot of expensive resin. I'm Carl from Glasscast, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this table using only this much resin, saving you lots of resin and lots of money. So if you're thinking of making a river table where the river is a solid color like this, or a metallic effect like the classic blue shimmer, then keep watching and learn how to achieve amazing results using only a third of the resin with the method I'm going to show you today. In this video, I'll explain the principle of the method and go through working out just how little resin you can make your table with. I'll prepare the main planks and then I'll show you how to make the infill, which I'll be doing with basic plywood. I'll talk about pigments and effects and then I'll go step by step through the various stages of the pour before finishing the table to a professional standard. So here we have our beautiful wany edge plank for the river table. Now I have seen a few videos online where makers do suggest an alternative way of saving resin when making your river table. And they would simply take a slab of wood that's going to be the same size as your table and they would route a river shape a few millimetres deep and then later fill that with resin. Whilst this method will indeed save you some resin, it also results in a pretty flat looking piece that for me at least seems to miss the entire point of resin river tables, which is the way the grain and the character of the wood follows the contours of the live wany edge. And so my method will still use the classic wany edge planks like these. So I got this lovely hackberry plank from a specialist supplier who kindly cut it down to size and down the middle for me. All I've had to do to prepare these planks is remove all of the loose bog and clean up the live edge with abrasive paper so that the resin bonds well to that live face. Enclosures for resin pores can be done in lots of different ways. In the past we've shown using polypropylene plastic for the base and upstands and also using timber battens covered in release tape for the upstands. For this project I've made the enclosure using melamine boards which is also known as furniture board and is readily available in most DIY shops. I've assembled the enclosure by screwing the upstands into the baseboard and then I filled the join lines with some filleting wax to prevent any resin from leaking out. A ball end tool like this is great for pressing the wax down into the gaps and getting a smooth finish. A plastic wedge like this can be used to scrape off any excess. Then to clean up any residue, simply rub down with a ball of wax to leave a neat watertight seal. Although resin generally won't stick to melamine, it is much safer to use some sort of release agent just to make sure. Here I'm using the RW4 spray wax, which is super easy to apply. I'll simply cover the entire surface of the enclosure with one coat, paying particular attention to the corners. Up to this point then, everything is exactly the same as a normal river table setup, but here's where things do get a little bit different. Behind this resin saving technique is the idea that if you are using solid coloured resin, like the jet black pores that you see a lot of these days, or a solid metallic colour like the metallic blue, then it really doesn't matter what's going on underneath the surface of the resin. And in fact, it seems like a real waste to have a solid slab of expensive resin when you could be bulking out the middle with just about anything. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We'll be pouring a thin layer of resin for the bottom, let that cure, then seal down a big piece of plywood, which will take up the majority of the volume of the river. And then finally, we'll pour the rest of the resin for the sides and top. So that what you've really got is a thin layer of resin around a plywood core. The amount of resin that you're going to need is of course going to come down to the dimensions of your river, including the length, the depth, the width and how much that's going to change along the table. The other factor will of course be how much volume you can take up with the plywood. Ideally what you want to aim for is about 5mm or quarter of an inch of resin all the way around the plywood. That way you'll have sufficient thickness to be able to machine the table flat without any risk of going through into that plywood. So my river measures 1.5 meters with an average width of 20 centimeters or 0.2 meters. At a depth of 34 millimeters, this means the total volume for this river filled entirely with resin would be approximately 11 liters. The plywood I'm using is 24 millimeters thick and if I cut it to size allowing for five millimeters all the way around, it should measure 1.49 meters by 0.19 meters by 24 millimeters taking up a volume of 6.8 litres. So if I subtract the volume of the plywood from the total volume of the river, I should only need 4.2 litres, which is about 4.2 kilograms of resin to complete this project. So let's get this plywood cut down to the rough river shape. 
I'll start by transferring the profile of the wany edge onto the plywood. Now remember that we want the plywood to fill the river up to the live edge as snugly as possible, leaving around a 5mm gap. To accommodate the angle of the live edge, I'm going to set the jigsaw to match that angle. I'm also cutting about 5mm wide of the line to account for the taper of the live edge. With the rough shape cut, I can offer it up to see if I need to make any adjustments or remove any additional material. Here I need to cut at a sharper angle to better match that live edge. Now when I check the fit, I'll prop the plywood on some lollipop sticks that I've taped together. This way I can simulate the bottom 5mm layer of resin. Obviously the fit doesn't have to be perfect, there will be larger and smaller gaps. As long as we're aiming for at least 5mm all the way round, we should be good. Here I'm also making a plug for this large knot hole. If the knot was smaller I probably wouldn't bother, but unfilled a hole this size might use up to 300 grams of resin all by itself. So here we have all of the wood ready for the resin pour. Our plywood insert is going to take up the majority of the river cavity. And we've left a 5mm gap underneath, around the edges and on top, so that when we do the pour, it will be completely encapsulated in the resin. We'll start by pigmenting all of the resin at once so that it's consistent colour. For the solid black that I'm using, consistency wouldn't really be a problem, but if you're blending colours or using metallic effects, then this would be more important. The resin for this project will be our famous Glass Cast 50, which has been used for literally thousands of river tables around the world and is basically the go-to epoxy for this type of project. This is the resin from one of our 5 kilo kits and I'm just pouring all of the resin into a bucket so I can pigment it all at once. For the pigment, I'm using our Jet Black Colour Epoxy Pigment. This is designed especially for epoxy and is highly concentrated, so it doesn't take much pigment to create that solid, opaque black that we need for this project. Here I'm adding 5%. You can check how solid the colour is by spreading the resin up the side of the bucket. It should still look pretty opaque even when it's spread thinly like this. I'll use some wood blocks in a non-stick tape together with these clamps to hold the planks flat to the base. To work out how much resin we need for this 5 mm base, we just need to multiply the area of the river again. So 1.5 meters by 0.2 meters by 5 millimeters of the depth gives us 1.5 liters. Because we're measuring by volume, calibrated cups are useful for measuring out the resin. Glass cast 50's 2 to 1 ratio means that for this 1.5 litre mix we need 1 litre of resin and 500 ml of hardener, which are mixed thoroughly in one container for 3 minutes, then transfer to a new container and then mix again to be absolutely sure this resin is thoroughly mixed. Simply pour the resin into the base of the river and into the knot holes. I'll also paint some of this resin up onto the live edges to seal them. Now we can leave this to cure to the B stage, which should take about 12 hours at 20 degrees C. Okay, so our first layer is at the B stage, and that's the point where the resin is firm, but still slightly tacky. So we can now move on and bond the plywood core into the river shape. For that, we're just gonna mix up a small batch of our pre-pigmented resin. Pour the majority of this resin into the river and knots. Now place the plywood core into the river, tilting one side down then lowering. This will help prevent any air cavities. Firmly press the core down along the whole length. To finish this stage off, we'll seal the plywood by painting the sides and top with the rest of the resin. Once again, leave it to cure for about 12 hours. Okay, so the bonding and sealing resin has now reached the B stage, so we can move on and do our final pour where we completely encapsulate this plywood core. If we got our sums right at the start, this pour should use all the remaining resin that we pigmented. Again, we're following the same mixing procedures that we've used throughout. It's now just a case of pouring the resin gently into the gap around the sides of the core and then continuing to pour all the way up to the top of the core so that it's fully encapsulated in the resin. The resin should fill all the way up to the top of the visible planks. Due to a bit of twist in my planks, there are some areas where the resin doesn't quite come to the top, but we are going to be machining this flat anyway. 
That's our final layer of resin into the river and the core is completely encapsulated. We just need to leave this now to fully cure. With glass cast 50 in a room like this at 20 degrees Celsius, that's gonna take about 48 hours. After that, all that's left is the machining and finishing. As you can see, the resin comes away very easily from the melamine barriers and base. Machining the surface of the table is the same process that your seal's using in our original river table tutorial. Just using a router sled set up on a flat surface and then gradually working your way down, machining through the surface until it's completely flat. As mentioned earlier, despite clamping them down, I did end up with a bit of twist in my planks, which has meant I needed to take a few millimetres off in places to make sure the surface is completely flat. This process is repeated for both sides of the table before using a saw to tidy up these edges. Before I get on to flattening the surface with the DA, you can see that the router has taken a few chips out of the resin on the surface, which might have been caused by me moving the router too fast, or perhaps I should have used a different bit. But this is no problem, and if you do get any chips like this, just mix up a small batch of resin, drizzle it into these holes, and let it reach a full cure before sanding. For the sanding, I'm using a dual action orbital sander, or DA, which makes light work of a job like this. These Abronet discs are like a sort of mesh abrasive, which resists clogging, making the job much quicker, and you can see the machine marks quickly disappear. I'm only skimming over the process here, but if you would like a really detailed guide on flatting and polishing a resin river table, then we do have a video devoted entirely to this topic. For these finer grits, I'm switching to wet sanding, so I'll just spray a little water on as I go. So we are almost there now, but before I go on to polishing the resin with the compound, I always like to protect the wood by sealing it with some Danish oil. This just means that when we do start the polishing, the compound itself won't stain the wood. I'll apply two or three coats, simply wiping the oil and then leaving it to dry off between coats. There are, of course, lots of other wood finishes that you might want to choose. With the wood protected, the last step is to bring the river to a full gloss using a polishing compound. Starting off with NW1, which is a coarse compound designed specifically for tough plastics like epoxy. And a polishing machine and pad like this makes the polishing process much quicker than attempting it by hand. The NW1 alone will produce a pretty high level of gloss, but for a full mirror finish, I'm following it up with Top Finish 2, which is a super high gloss compound. I'm also using a soft pad. So there we have it, our finished river table, and I absolutely love how this one's turned out. That classic combination of the natural grain and lines of these live edge planks against the sleek, glossy black resin. And the best part of all, by encapsulating that plywood core, I've created this stunning table using a third of the resin. That's a third of the cost and a third of the resources. As ever, the Glasscast 50 resin was a joy to work with and is absolutely perfect for a project like this. It's available from glasscastresin.com along with everything else you've seen me use today, including the pigments, spray wax, abrasives and polishes. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I genuinely hope that it starts a trend towards reducing the amount of resin that's used in tables like these, especially if doing so makes your project more affordable and accessible. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.